Hello, as today is that of Thursday, the 27th day of June 2019. My name is Derek. This is the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades, and other like with each his own risk and their own reward. Welcome and uh, look at Bitcoin, uh, multiple time frames, go over Fibonacci. Not only the ones lines in here, but some new ones from this high and working its way down. A down day today and it's really the first decent one it's had in, in quite a while. Price action last night getting up, or afternoon, getting up to 13868 on the Coinbase exchange. So far as retraced as low as 11300 So that's a differential of uh, close to 30% from the high. And price action is still nicely above the 18 average. And when you have a move like this, as I was stating yesterday, you're kind of due for a correction, and it really hasn't been much. I'm looking in at uh, more towards around this uh, even 10 to possibly 86 even, as where we may come down if there's going to be such a event of retracement lower. It's high volatile times, and when you break out as fast as you go, as you do, then the pullbacks are going to be doing that. With that being said, all sell-offs, I believe, are guilty until proven innocent. And when we look at this on shorter-term time frames, if there's any evidence that this thing is ready to get back going, well, our next high is retracing back to previous level of 13.7 and in the area of this 13,000, which well has been resistance for all these Fibonacci levels that I put up. Not seen in here is a level around 4,800, which... We can see on the day that it reached it, it got above it, and it never went below it. It never went below the 6,300. It got to it this day, and the next day it rose above it, never seeing it again. At least not yet, if it even does. But And here, same thing at uh, 9,800. No resistance. Now at 12,009, yes, we've got this time. We have managed to at least found for one day that it's going to be a level of resistance. So these Fibonacci lines in here represent the levels from this high to this low. And now what I'm going to do, and, this, and regardless of where the top is right now, again, it's near 13 high change, I'm going to take the levels from these $3,100 lows and these highs and calculate Fibonacci for the way down. And the uh, percentages that I'm going to be using is the 2.13% all the way down to the 61.8. So I have seven Fibonacci numbers already ready to go. And I'm going to switch this to the Tether and the Bitcoin on the Binance exchange for this uh, for these lines. And at this time frame, it was 3 p.m. Eastern time, and Bitcoin was uh, at 14,000. And... So there we have it, or near 14,000, never did quite get there. Okay, so there was the move. It happened really, really fast. So this minute, the market went down 1 and a third percent, but this minute it went down 4.37 in only that single minute. I was expecting something like this to happen at some point for a little while. In fact, Roughly around this time, I was thinking in my head, okay, you know what, something like this is so due to eventually happen. And it really hasn't been anything psychic or anything, although I'm going to talk about one psychic moment later in this video I've had. And I haven't, I haven't had many, but this was one of few. But that's neither here nor there for this market. So we have the market going down big. Does it find, it does find no support here. So fast move to the next level, most certainly in play. It pierced well below 12.859. That represents the Fibonacci from the 5.57 uh, decline. On the one minute it found support and then fast moved to the next level after we go down there. And then the 9% level at 12.2, we find a little bit of support in that area piercing extra, resisting this Fibonacci line, then supporting amongst it, and that was it. And now we break through this, and at this point, you're like, okay, you know what, this thing should have been heading down, like, at that moment. But it didn't. Rather, we had to wait a little bit. 
or was that or yeah that that was never mind that was the bottom I got ahead of myself because uh, I thought again another leg lower was coming in but let me just scroll this on and change the time frame off the one and in viewing it on the five we can see this double hit in this area piercing extra getting above it supporting this level lifting off piercing below rare situation there this is one of the things I talk about that well on on average it should be just as much that it pierces below compared to piercing extra well there's a pierce below but the ratio of pierce below and pierce extra is phenomenally uh, one-sided to piercing extra as we hear we have a pierce extra on this Fibonacci after falling below from here it rallies to the 18 a little bit of support in here and then the breakdown but it doesn't go anywhere near the next Fibonacci level at least it looks as if that's where it's heading to because we see support on this period and this period. We resist it here. Again, piercing extra. And now a good pullback to this level. Now, short term, there's an inverted head and shoulders pattern here. Left shoulder, head, and the right shoulder. And it's been congesting on that neckline right now for the last uh, two periods. Now, the breakout attempt, would, to me, would just be in the area of this previous high. If, of course, it does that. But it is showing signs, although weakening the signs, that we are headed for the next test of, or a test of, a pierce below 11,224. And within the 15, if it's not able to get above this 15 and break that inverted head and shoulders neckline, and even if it does, it can still pull back. And then there's, there's a good chance breaking below, we will see that it will do it. Again, with that being said, though, the good chances were here. It was holding and staying below it. So the fact at 10 a.m. that it didn't do it, well, you got to give it at the short term benefit of the doubt, even though the sellers are now in control of this market very short term, that it may want to attempt to uh, uh, regain this thing. But the attempt since this high, this one here obviously fluttered. And now will it do another one? I don't know. And uh, looking at this on the four-hour term time frame, let me just put this on auto. This is where these things just get really, really interesting. Really, uh, we, well, five red candles in a row. Price action hanging in there within the 18, so that's enough to neutralize this market. Definitely enough to slow down the momentum more than anything. So the 18 average of highs is in a 12.7, 12 Fibonacci at 12.8. Really, this is a number short term. It's got to clear for me to be uh, convinced that this uh, very volatile, hefty bull market is still in play. And on the short term, of course, breaking down below like this level here, well, that, that's one of the things, again, I'll be looking for. The size of these candles here, compared to everything before, are, is enormous. So volatility is high. It's got to settle down at some point. So until it does, you can expect there to be continuation of uh, very good volatility. Maybe not higher volatility than recently, but still high. And still possibly that of uh, fast moves. This thing can rally and sell off so fast at this point because of the status of the market in which it is in. Okay, that is the Bitcoin analysis for today in under 10 minutes. I next want to talk about Atom or Cosmos for the first time. As I have added this to my collection or to my trading platform strategy, I'm crossing this with Litecoin. And I've already made one trade already on my ratio. As I bought this last night at uh, about uh, 20 and a half hours. And I sold some this morning waking up. Within this, it's been just going straight down. Uh, I was asked earlier why I like Theta. Well, one of the reasons... Why I like Theta is why I like Wabi, or Atom, rather, not Wabi, Atom, Cosmos. And that is because it is passes the wallet test. And for me to pass the wallet test, it needs to be cheap for me to move it on the blockchain. And on the Binance fees, this is as of weeks and weeks ago, but it's in the, around the same area. And this was with the higher, well, I guess it's the same prices against the dollar. But I guess this is with higher prices before, but not really. Adam, it cost 005 of these to take off, one two hundredths of one. 
or the equivalency of three cents. That's definitely handleable. As far as how long it takes, it took, uh, well, it took about four minutes for me to take it off my Cosmos wallet, off my Atomic wallet, A-T-O-M-I-C, to the point where I could sell it on Binance. So that passes that test. Now, I have no idea if, <coughs> excuse me, I have no idea if it's going to pass the other tests. The volatility test, it probably will. I do like how it went from like 47 up to 67 and all that, but I mean, it's a new coin. There's not much here to go on with it. So maybe it might be a Monero or Ethereum low volatility coin, but I doubt it. I think it uh, should be fine for that, especially when I'm, when I'm training it against Litecoin, where I, I kind of need coins with Litecoin to be very volatile because Litecoin, Litecoin, although better than Monero, Ethereum, and over the long term, Bitcoin, although Bitcoin's very volatile right now, those are less volatile coins. So I will end up seeing uh, if uh, that passes the test. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I, I obviously am up right now given that I mentioned buying at 20 hours. So that was... Uh, down in here at this 46 change level at the bottom. As I was looking at them, I'm like, yeah, that's just what I, I bought, like, a little over point tenth of a Binance coin worth. That's the minimum bet on the Binance exchange. I bought, like, 0.14 Binance worth. Then I moved it. I only moved, like, 0.1 of it to the wallet to see if it would move. And it did. And then I moved it back. I noticed it was like five minutes. Okay, let's buy it. So I then went to my Trezor hardware wallet and I paid like a buck seventy-five or two bucks to move funds out of the uh, wallet, which was expensive, but it is was what it is, was. And my plan was when Bitcoin, if Bitcoin does this, I'm going to do it. If there's another round of Bitcoin going up and all these altcoins going down, I'll probably even add another coin or two. I'm going to add a decent amount if Litecoin can have a significant break, but... As this plays out right now, short term, we can see from this rally on the single hour term time frame how we have had several hours just cup, uh, like Ewing cupping it and even getting and holding above this level of resistance here on that short term time frame. On the 15 minute, there's a rally that happened at 6 o'clock, pulling back, coming up lower high into this, thus failing this attempt but succeeding its correctionary phase with its higher low. And now within this attempt to break above the 18 average of highs occurring at 9 o'clock, well, a little bit of congestion sideways. And for the la and I like how over the last hour, over the last four periods, price action is just staying in this range between 5,000 and 5,047. So we'll see. I, I, I sold at the, near this top, 5,000. I, I sold it for BNB because if you sell on the Litecoin exchange, what sucks for Bitcoin on Binance? What sucks against Bitcoin is they only have two decimal points for the amount of Litecoin that you can own for what you can buy. So you can, if you want to buy, say, one Litecoin, that's fine. But the next higher amount you can buy is exactly 1.01, not 1.00 whatever bunch of zeros one, just one zero, 1 1.01. But on the BNB exchange, there's like five or six decimals of Litecoin you can buy. So I end up buying like. Point zero point four decimals worth of a Litecoin for a handful of Atom. And of course doing so roughly near the high. It would have been roughly at around uh, I'm guessing in here. As it was coming back at this point it would have been at this stage. So now I hope it has a nice little big rally higher and I'll sell some more. Or Litecoin will have a big big rally and we'll, I'll buy it back. All that kind of stuff but See, when playing these ratio games and playing the markets the whole, pretty much the whole time, I'm not caring short term which direction a market is going to go in towards. And, I mean, I don't even know if this is going to go up. What I don't have is, quote unquote, a right hand man to say, okay, this is going to be not only for short term, but even long term. Okay, yep, this is going to be a phenomenal long-term coin and this and this person's track record is so phenomenal that I have no choice but to tail the selection. And tailing a selection is another word of copying a pick. Now let's move on to Theta which 
is a pick I tailed I, I back in 2018 as well. And I was asked, why do I like this? And, well, a lot of it has to do with psychicness. And I'm going to talk about one psychic event I had, but I'm by no means anywhere near someone you would call a medium, someone who even would even try to do it because I'm probably going to fail. Although I did have one week in 27, 2007, or 12 years ago, where it was phenomenally strong. But that is part of the long-term reasons. Is this a coin? Now, it was Michelle White Dove stating, oh, this coin's going to be worth thousands. Even if this coin is worth dozens and dozens and dozens, that is worth playing. So if you're wrong there, Miss White Dove, and it's worth dozens and dozens and dozens, well, that's correct as far as I'm concerned. That's number one. The volatility test. Well, what I did about... Oh, two weeks ago, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago in that area, is I took 20 different coins with Theta being one, and I did it from January the 30th to that current time frame then. And January 30th was the first day this came on the exchange, first day I got data, which is why I chose that start date. It also coincided with right around the area of the altcoin market top. So it was a good entry start point to do a data analyst from. And one of my conclusions was within the 20 coins that I tested, this finished number two to Wabi, W-A-B-I, of the selected list uh, for volatility. And the list of the 20 coins, I can bring that up and show the spreadsheet. It was Theta, Litecoin, Nano, and Bitcoin as well. Uh, Ethereum Classic, Ethereum, ARC, GRS, uh, XMR, XRP, which is Monero and Ripple, a Cardano, ADA, TRX, Tron, ELF, uh, Qtum, Omis Go, Dash, Wabi, uh, Lunar, SNGLS, and the US dollar. Those were the list of coins that I chose. And it came number two. It also came number three in another statistic, and second among altcoins, which was the least amount that it lost from January 30th up until now. In fact, the only coin of the 19 of the, uh, actually not counting Bitcoin as well, I should state, but against Bitcoin, I should be saying. So Bitcoin was the base, but for coins against Bitcoin, the perf the best performer from January 30th to a little while ago was the U.S. dollar. It was the only one that was actually up at that point. Barely losing was Litecoin. And down about 30%, which was actually the next best, was Theta. So performance-wise, it was holding its own better than a lot of the altcoins that were getting their asses kicked much more along the way. And we've seen these moves. So it passes the volatility test. I can play coins like Monero and Ethereum if I was supposed to desire with this, and I don't, because of this having high volatility. If I can combine a high volatile coin with a low volatile coin, it's going to be a high volatile cross. It's almost like if you add, uh, I'm just trying to add some sort of really bad, bad something, but like if you add a bunch of SHIT into uh, some sort of great meal, it's still going to taste like shit. Uh, even if it's just a little bit. Just saying. Yes, anyway. So this is priced against Bitcoin, 972 Satoshi. First time it's been in the uh, three-digit figures as, uh, well, other than maybe marginally here. Maybe, yeah, marginally, 982 on uh, August the 14th. Again, a case of Bitcoin losing. And I'm waiting for the volatility. So in this move in here, if I don't have orders in and I did at the time, you'd have to be there. And for something like this, I would have had to force myself into it just because of the timing aspect. I seen it happening before it was before it was bedtime, quote unquote. Meeting at eleven o'clock, I noticed this was going, so I would have had to have a plan in place. And a lot of it might have just been pulling an all nighter that night. 
This one here, he orders, you can live without orders. Maybe not for some key levels here and there, but... Well, the price action before this one was 1200 then it went up to 26 pulled back to 22 then 36 then over 5 and now it's at 9 Same thing's going to happen again. It's just going to go up 2x, 3x, 4x, 6x, 10x, 100x, I even believe, from wherever the key bottoms happen to be. And I'm not trying to predict when this happens. i got a lot of crosses that I am playing against theta. So if situation comes in where theta just rises big, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go through each individual cross and say, how many theta do I want to sell for each market? I'll let just calculate each amount. And I mean, I don't even have to do that. And send it in through the blockchain, which is another reason why I love this coin. It's blockchain and wallet. And the reason why I don't have, because what I did, uh, what I would have to do is like, for example, like, like Litecoin, I'm looking, okay, say Litecoin goes up, I'm going to determine from my Trezor wallet, and it even doesn't matter, then how much I want to send, I want to buy this much here and here. But let's just assume I'm trading theta against coin, I'm not going to say what the coins are, I'm just going to say against this, 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 and this. So this is one coin, so I want to sell maybe... 500 theta for this cross. I'm going to need 300 theta for this cross. Maybe this is a big one. I'm going to need 3,000 for this one. And I'm going to need this much, this much, and this much. I'll add how much I need. Oh, I'm going to need, say, 7,500 theta to sell. So I'll go to my wall, send 7,500, and that will be that. But I don't have to do that. I can do this one by one. Meaning, okay, got to trade this against this coin, 250 theta. I'll send 250. Okay, trade against this coin, 400. I'll send 400. The amount that it costs me to send theta off of its keystroke uh, wallet that it has is 0 0.05 or 0 0.501 T fuels, which were given to me in the first place as it is anyway. Which means it's like a hundred thousand transfers for one T fuel? Um zero. It's nothing. So I can send like five, six, seven, eight, ten, twenty transfers off of my wallet if I chose desire to in a five, ten, twenty minute span. And and not care about fees, track each uh each one individually, sell them on the market, move them back and forth and, and then just play the game. As it is. Now how I do this with coins like this and Litecoin is allocation for how I play this because I'm trading this against and I'll show my crosses. This is my this is my spreadsheet. I put the prices in here. Not much is going on, so it's like I could like take a couple hours off and I probably won't, don't expect much to happen right now. We'll see, but it's each coin dependent. This is the last trade, and the move sets it. So I see here. Okay, last trade 386 with Arc and Theta. And now it's 399. So it's up 13 cents, which means ARC has overperformed 13 or 3.3 percent since the last trade. But I'm getting a lot of these like in at the last trade, including Litecoin Go at the exact number right now, which is interesting in itself. Unless my formulas are off, and that's correct. And no, both formulas are right. Okay, so ARC Theta. Then we got Adam Litecoin, which I just added. Uh, but for Theta, we got Dash, we got Ethereum Classic, so that's three. Got a whole bunch here against Litecoin. So we got Litecoin for four, Neo for five, Qtum for six, Waves for seven, and Ripple for eight. So I get eight different crosses against it, and if Theta goes up big like it did before, there's a good chance I'm going to be selling it to buy eight different coins. Maybe even nine or ten. Because the dollar in Bitcoin is also going to be in there at times when the time is right for it to be the case. But, for now, I'm, I like the wallet, let's just put it that way. And uh, it's when, you send, when I take it off the, uh, the wallet, the key, then I push the confirm button, put the amount, the address, my password that I put in. It's going to take about 60 to 70 seconds from the time I push the send button to the time I can sell it on Binance. And what I've even been mentioning in here is some of the wild movements. Yeah, not much over the last little bit going from 950 to 978. And right now, I mean, things are settling down in here with a lot of these markets, this one included. But moves like this, you go from like 903 up to 1026. 
That was yesterday from uh, in the three o'clock hour. Even before then, you can see it's moved just like just in here. It doesn't look like much is going on, but as far as the math is concerned, that's 1010 to 1058. That's still a five percent move. So as far as short-term trading availability of those percentage numbers work for you, this one doesn't. It has it. It's and at any time that this could like one of the strategies might be okay. I don't know if it's going to happen. But why don't I just have like a few ready to go sell orders at say 1048? That would be a move of like six, seven percent. I'm sure to fill some of the orders in somewhere along the way. I'm not going to sell too, too much at that, but that's something you could do. And then if you're just there and you see it gets there, you have your alerts come in. Okay, we're here and here, down market, you've got some buys, and oh, this happens. Now you see it's at 1,006. Yeah, you don't put any orders in. Maybe you're able to get trades there. And if you missed out on it, well, as I mentioned, it takes minutes, minute even, to get the funds to the exchange. So if you missed out at the 1,000, it came down to 960. Well, you could even sold, bought, and sold again. But even if you were waiting to get for it to buy to that point, it would have worked out on that example. Okay, I really don't think there's much. I'll go over Litecoin. I'm going to finish this video. And against its dollar, it came back to where it came from in this area here. And it uh, broke the sideways consolidation range. As far as this time, this is the first time it's been below the 18 average of lows since the, uh, the breakdown here on April 20th. So this is the first time in about a couple of months. So it's either it's a statement of reversal of trend or it is just correcting it a filling one of this empty space and again the short-term analysis is where you're going to have to go very similar four hour within uh, this and Bitcoin as well but to me one of the key things about this uh, comes into play I'm a believer in this as far as its fundamentals the best that I know of it and as far as how I use this on the blockchain Litecoin and Bitcoin is like the exact same thing I so much prefer Litecoin with its uh, blockchain speed and its fees than I do Bitcoin. So long term, I am very, very, very bullish. This price action found no resistance here, here. It's hanging in there above the 18 average amongst this. So it's got a d decent amount. You'd have to think before it needs to uh, really uh, cool down. And 18 average of lows is here, about 90. That would be still not the most... Uh, bearish of things to have happen. In fact, it's normal that it could come up to the 61.8% level and resist it with a Pierce extra. That's what it's doing right now. It's now three periods tangling within it. It's been above it. It's now below it. Let's take a look at this cross against Bitcoin. And it's technically back below 100 to 1 ratio or above the 0.01 number, albeit barely just 49.75 Satoshi above it, this Poloniex rate right now is on the five minute term time frame the price action just had a huge fall at 2 30 in the morning price action going from the one handle all the way down to nine i was doing the shift shift work i don't think i'm gonna live my life like this but i'm like oh why don't i just do two halfers meaning you sleep for like three hours, four hours, and then you do another three or four hours sleep for the rest of the day. No, I don't think I'm going to do it. But I did that last night. So I was up from like uh, here, three o'clock, to about 5.45. And then I took another, then I slept till nine. But with that being said, I was like, oh, wow, it is going under that number. And it's back higher. And daily time frame, all these red candles down in a row. A lot of it is because of Bitcoin uh, doing what it's doing. Not holding any of these key areas. But when I look at this, do I, this is one of the spots giving us choppiness. I'm like, does it really need to hold the 18 average of lows in here? I mean, it's choppy. Ever since they've been established, the 18. It has been nothing but above and below. And that has always been the case. In fact, what it has never done is, and I'm not counting this low here, by the way, it has never went above or below it and then resist the 18 and then make a new higher low depending on its situation. Hasn't done any of that yet, not even once. Because it gets above the highs, it doesn't make a new high and it goes into this. And the next move is in the lows. 
So it goes below here. Again, I'm not counting this because that never happened in my book. So it goes below the lows, and then it goes above the highs. Then it goes to the lows, and then it goes above the highs. Then it goes below the lows. Now it goes above the highs. If. Now, technically speaking, I guess if I'm literal, it has been below the lows in here. Because the 18 average of lows is in at uh, 9994. And intraday, it's already been below that. However, just basically saying that if it goes below it again, that, that's the type of markets I want to trade are continuously choppy markets. There's no bones about it, no doubt about it. It's profitable. I, I mean, Litecoin, Bitcoin, I, I, I wish I didn't. I wish I did what I, I wish I did what I didn't. But I was thinking up here, do I sell some for Bitcoin to buy back? I really don't need to, I'm thinking. I'm doing all these trades against uh, the uh, the other coins, and I'll get my Litecoin that away. And I realize that the all coins could get, go down together, and this exact event could happen. But I'm also thinking, I'm doing the math. Well, I'm going to have to pay all of these transaction fees, and I could be running into two $3 Bitcoin costs to uh, send it back on the blockchain to buy it. And I'm thinking... You know, it really does suck that Bitcoin sucks. That's what I was thinking. Now, Bitcoin is king. If it suck, if I, if it wasn't king, and I thought it sucked so much, I wouldn't have. I'd have. I'd own it like I own Ethereum. I wouldn't own it. I would use it for a means to an, an end if I had to, to actually uh, buy and sell. But no, I wouldn't own it. But I do own it because it is king. And there are going to be situations where I'm going to maybe need it, like of course buying the Atom or the Cosmos last night. And there's going to be a lot more other things. In fact, buying silver and gold, I bought through, and I didn't buy gold, but yesterday I bought uh, 25 ounces of silver, and I did so via that of Bitcoin. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.